It's Ken with Ken's Creations. Well, I'm back with another Cricut Print Then Cut video. I am so excited about this technology, you guys. If you have not seen my first two videos in the series, I highly recommend watching them. The first video, I go over calibrating your machine, how to do your firmware update, and how to do the Design Space plugin. All of those you will need to do your first print then cut, and you will need them to follow this tutorial where I show you how you can upload your vector images. In my second video, I showed you how to use those Cricut images and my overall first impressions of the Cricut Explore print then cut, which let me tell you, I was blown away. This technology is really amazing and it's so simple. So in this video, I wanna show you how we're going to use those files that I know all of you have went to different sites to buy. Now, with the print then cut, you are going to wonder what files do I use? So normally we would come to this upload image option and you have basic upload and vector upload. And prior to this update, your vector upload were traditionally those SVG files and you would cut them on multiple different pieces of paper and layer them. Your basic uploads, you would upload them and it would turn into a solid black figure. After this update, that has changed. Your basic upload now will still be a single layer, but it will be a colored single layer for the print and cut. Vector upload will still be multiple layers and you can print those and cut those. However, in my opinion, at that point, you might as well cut them out of different layers of paper. But I do know some people still like to cut their SVGs and print and cut those, so you could. Now, with your basic upload, nothing has changed. You still have a JPEG, GIF, PNG, or BMP file. Now, I've done a lot of tests around this, and in my personal opinion, the JPEG and PNG files work the best if you're going to be doing the print then cut for your design. So most of your designers will have those files. So for today's uh, examples, I'm going to be using a file from pppndesigns.com and Scrappy Do Designs. And you can see that when you open their files, they give you tons of different files. They give you .dx files, .svg files, .jpg, .png. So here's the PNG and here's the JPEG. And those are the ones I'm going to be using. So now what is the difference between a PNG file and a JPEG file? So let's take a look at that really quick because it is really important in design space what this means. So as you can see, when I bring up this, your PNG file is to the left, your JPEG file is to the right. Your PNG file has a gray translucent background whereas your JPEG file has a white background. And this is really important because when you import a PNG file into Design Space, it's just going to import the file. It will not import any background. So it you don't have to worry about cleaning up any background. If you import a JPEG file, it will import this white background and you will have to use the magic wand to get rid of the white background. So that is why I choose to work with PNG when possible because it just makes it a little bit of an easier process because I don't have to worry about cleaning up the white background. Some of your designers don't give you a PNG file, so you just have to do the JPEG file, which is fine, but that's the big difference. PNG, there is no background. It's got a translucent background, so you're just importing the file where JPEG has a background and you'll have to clean up that background. So I hope that kind of clears up the difference between those two. Now each designer gives them to you differently. As you can see in PPBN, she gives them to you just all grouped together um, and different snapshots. Now, 
as you can see in Scrappy-Doo, they've broken it down based on the program you're going to be importing them into. So they have it by Make the Cut, um, SVG, Studio. Now, if I wanted to use the PNG, they have this PNG, which is the whole group of the entire set group together, which I wouldn't want that. But in the layout map, that's where the rest of those PNG files are. And what's great is if I look at this one, which is the one I'm gonna be using for this demonstration, that's where the completed PNG file is for like this little Santa surfboard. And that's the one I would wanna use. So for today's demonstration, that's what I'm using and that's where I would find them within the files once I download them. Cause that can be confusing sometimes where you download these files and you get all of these extra files and you think, which one am I gonna be using? Those are the ones and how I use them. So let's start with that cute, adorable Santa. I'm gonna to go to basic upload. Same process, select, clean, save. So I'm gonna to continue to step one. I'm going to hit browse and I'm gonna go ahead and go to my desktop because that's where I save those. And there's that beach Santa. I remember that was in my layout map. And then I want the one where he was standing next to the surfboard, which is right here. And it's gonna give me that little thing here. Now this is a complex image. So I'm gonna hit complex image and continue to step two. Now I don't need anything else but this surfboard. So I'm gonna click this crop tool and I'm going to draw a little crop around just that portion. It's gonna bring him up. And if you see, if I draw or pick this little eyeball, it's gonna show me where the cut lines are. Ah, there's my little cut lines. So I'm gonna hit continue to step three. There's my Santa Claus. So as you can see, there's my cut lines. Now, see that new checkbox? Preserve original image within shape recommended for printing. So if this is going to be a print then cut image, that needs to be checked because it's going to preserve the original image within the shape. Everything is going to stay exactly as you see it on the screen. Watch what happens, guys. I hit save image. He's going to show up in my little library down here. And before this change, this would normally turn into a black blob, as I would say. And now it, it will actually turn exactly as you see it. You're going to see a color um, image just like that in design space. So as you can see there, there is my guy is a color. Yay. That's so exciting. So that is a huge change from what it was before, because when that would have normally been saved, like I said, that would be a black, um, solid and now it's colored. Um, so now if I was to click on this, and put insert image, it's gonna come into design space. Now, because we check mark that little box that said preserve original image recommended for printing, as you can see, it automatically flattened that image and knows it's a print then cut image. So if you watched my second video, um, I showed you what the flattening and unflattening of an image was, that knows it's going to be a print then cut image. So at this point, I can hit go or resize it and be good to go. But I'm gonna go ahead and go through that process again so you guys have a good understanding of how this works um, before we show you how it cuts. So I want to quickly show you the difference between uploading the JPEG and the PNG so you can see what I meant about the white translucent background versus the white background. So let's show you the candy as a JPEG upload and then I'll show you the PNG upload. Um, so I'm gonna to go to upload image I'm gonna do basic upload and we're gonna start with the JPEG. So I'm gonna hit browse. I'm gonna to go to my desktop cause that's where that candy file is, cute candy. And here is the JPEG. There it is. And you're gonna notice as in with different from my Santa, it comes in, but it comes in with that white background. And it's really easy. All you have to do is take your wand and get rid of the white background that you don't want. And Design Space will clean it up. It's very easy, but you still have to get rid of it. You can look at your cut lines there. So there are your cut lines um, and continue to step three. Now, that's how easy it was, but that's the difference on a JPEG. So let me show you now what it would look like with a PNG so you can see how you don't have to go through that step with a PNG file. We're gonna to go to basic upload, 
continue to step one, browse. I'm gonna go to my desktop. This time I'm gonna go to those candy and I'm gonna do the PNG cute candy. It's gonna show up right there. It's a complex image. What I love about this, everyone, I absolutely love, there's no tracing. Isn't that great? I don't have to trace anything. I don't have to do anything. It does it for me. So continue to step three. There's my image. I'm going to preserve original image, save image, and then it's going to save it once again in my uploaded images down here. I just click it, insert image. It's going to show up here. And all I have to do is size it. And once again, it knows it's a print then cut. Now, if I didn't want it to be a print then cut, could I technically change it um, and unflatten it? Sure, I could. Um, I wouldn't recommend that, um, but you could say cut instead. But see how it changes it from that color to now that solid shape as if it would have before the upgrade. Okay, so let's go ahead and size these. I want to go ahead and do this at, let's do this at three and a half inches and not 35 inches. Woo, woo, that'd be big. All right, and then let's do him at actually four and a half inches. And then all we have to do, everyone, is hit go. That's how easy this print and cut is. So the system knows it's a print and cut, so it's gonna automatically know to do it on eight and a half by 11. It's gonna automatically know to put those registration marks on there. Now, because the images were too big to fit on one paper, it automatically put it on two paper, which is fine. I'm okay with that. Now, once again, here's that bleed line that we've talked about. The bleed line gives you that extra buffer room if you want that around your images. So basically, it's putting a bleed line, as you can see, in the same color, so that way, if your image, for whatever reason, gets off a little bit, you don't have an extra white line around your image. So I'm gonna leave that bleed line on, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit print and continue. My print dialog box is gonna come up. I'm printing to my Epson, um, which I've always said artisan, but it's artesian, I was corrected, so thank you uh, to my YouTube subscriber who told me it's artesian. And I'm going to go ahead and hit print. And then I'm going to show you how it looks um, all cut out on the machine, guys. So we have our image printed out. Let's go ahead and I'm going to print this or cut this one. And then we'll go ahead and cut the second. You'll see it scan the registration marks um, in all three corners. And then it will cut the image. And then you'll see me put the second one on to cut that. So let's go and see how it does. All right, everyone. So there is just a quick um, show of what it did. Um, so as you can see, there's no white. The here is this. Now um, this here and this here, that's his arm behind there. So I don't want you to think that that is um, any kind of overlapping or anything, but um, that's just the way the file is. But as you can see, what I love about the Cricut print and cut is I didn't have to do any tracing. The Cricut design space did everything for me. It, it did all the tracing, it did the tracing in here, and then of course it did the cutting for me. So. This is what I love about this. It's a very smart program and it's very easy, very user friendly. So I absolutely, absolutely love the quality and I love how well it does. So what I wanna show you really quick, um, last thing in this tutorial is how you can take an image just out of Google Images or an image out of Yahoo Search Images and import that into Design Space and then basically do a print and cut with that. So let me show you that really quick. That was so easy and the results are stunning. I've told you the Cricut print and cut has been made so simple and I absolutely love that about that. There's no tears, there's no tracing, very simple. Now, I did wanna explain that I did use the PNG file. However, you can use 
JPEG files. Um, I just personally prefer PNG files and all of the designers I use give me both and I choose PNG files. But if you just have access to JPEG files, the process is the same and the results are the same. So if you want to use those instead, absolutely you can do that. Um, just follow the same steps. Now the last thing I wanted to show you in this video is what do you do when you're doing a project and you don't have that image in your cartridge library? You don't have that image in your SVG library. What do you do? Well for me, I go to Google Images. I love Google Images. So I want to show you if you go to Google Images and let's say we look up Cricut. Of course it's going to bring you up all the websites with Cricut, but it also gives you image results around Cricut. And here's Cricut logos. And here's that little Cricut bug, which I love. And I know what you guys are already saying. He's on a cartridge, so you wouldn't have to do this. But I just want to show you if I want to do a print and cut, print and cut, you could do that. What you would do is hit view image. You would go ahead and right click and save this image to your desktop. Okay. You know, click out of this at that point. And we're going to go ahead and hit upload image. Now, anytime you save something from Google, it's going to be saved usually as a JPEG file. So it's a basic upload, same steps, continue to step. You're going to browse for that image, which it's right there, Cricut JPEG. And I'm going to do it as a complex image. Now the thing on Google images, you guys have to keep in mind is Google images, depending on the resolution, you want to make sure your lines, especially like around his antennas are nice and clean. And to do that, you want to go to show advanced options, and you want to turn your color tolerance up to 100 because that's going to get as close as it can to this green line and it's going to get in there and cut in real nice. So with that color tolerance up to 100, especially with this white background, I can select my wand, hit this. And as you can see, got rid of the majority of all that. I can take my eraser, get rid of this and then continue to step three. And look at that. Look how beautiful those lines are. So make sure, especially with Google images, you're using that color tolerance, especially if you see your red lines get really jaggeded, you could go back and play with that color tolerance and turn it up and see if it smooths out your lines. I'm going to go ahead and hit save image. He's going to show up down here in my uploaded images and insert image and dun dun dun. dun. There's my little Cricut guy. It knows it's a print and cut. It's already flattened it. There he is. I'm going to go ahead and edit him. Let's make him, let's do, let's do four inches high and hit go. Now remember, this is something we downloaded from Google and we're going to print and then cut it. Let's do it. There he is. Look how cute he is. So I'm going to go ahead and print this and then I'm going to show you it cut out and show you how amazing it does even with Google images. Okay. So here is our little Cricut guy that we found off of Google. It printed out with our registration marks. We're going to go ahead and see how he cuts on the machine. Can you imagine how many images this opens up for us now with our Cricut Explorers? So what it's going to do, it just like any time, it's going to look for those registration marks and then it's going to cut it and then we'll see how it does. All right, everyone. So there is an image we found on Google Images. We imported it in as a JPEG to Design Space. Design Space did everything else for us, did the tracing, everything else, and we were able to successfully print then cut and look at that. Amazing. There is no white on there. So we'll just add that to successful images here on what this machine can do. So this video, I hope it helped you guys to see how you can use all of those SVGs that you have in your library to use as print then cut. Um, make sure to remember that when importing those, you still have to look at those SVG files. So the SVG files still have layers, so you can print and print then cut those in different layers, or I just do the basic upload and print then cut those as one single layer. 
Now on the single layer ones, make sure to check mark those because you want to keep those in those original images just like I showed you. So once again, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to do the print and cut with your own images and also on any images you find off the internet. Make sure you guys are checking out all my videos on the Cricut Explorer print and cut. I'm going to be having a lot more videos come out regarding some new materials. I'm going to have a video on the Silhouette Cameo versus Cricut Explorer. And I'm going to have some more videos regarding some new features coming out also with the machine. So make sure if you haven't subscribed to the channel by clicking subscribe now. Make sure you're checking out my blog over at www.creativeken.blogspot.com. Make sure you're checking out all of Ken's creations all over the internet. Make sure to check out my Facebook page, my Twitter page, my Pinterest page. Um, oh, also I sew close to my heart now, so make sure you check out my close to my heart page. Pretty much anywhere I am on the internet, I would love for you to come check me out and subscribe there. So, all right, everyone, I'm once again so impressed with this print and cut on the Cricut Explorer. As you can see, once again, the results have been great. If you haven't checked out my other videos, make sure to check those out. You'd be impressed with how great this is doing. So, hope you educated and taught you guys some new stuff that maybe you didn't know. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. All right, get your machines out, start playing with the design space, get in there, get used to the print and cut, and go out there and create something magical. All right, thanks everyone. Have an amazing day.